<laughs> what do you guys think of mommy's cold shower? No. Eleanor, what do you think? Yummy. <laughs> <laughs> So you're no cold shower. No. And you like cold showers? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome to lesson three, cold shower. My first experience with a cold shower was as a kid. And when I was probably throwing a tantrum and my mom threw me in a cold shower, uh, clothes and all. And uh, it definitely shocked me out of that tantrum. But, you know, as an adult, would you do it as a choice? For the longest time, I thought, no way, no way, right? And you've probably seen all those really nice images of people on Instagram, all calm and peaceful in some tropical location under a waterfall. Well, I did one of those on my honeymoon. And I can tell you that under that waterfall, it is absolutely not all calm and serene. It is definitely a cold, shocking waterfall. But it looks nice, right? <laughs> So the thing about the cold shower is that the calmness comes after you do that cold plunge. It's amazing what happens afterwards. Um, it, you have this invigorating achievement and then it kind of, you get this, it follows on with this sense of ease. And honestly, it does not take long to get the effects of a cold shower. It just takes about 30 seconds. 30 seconds is all you can do, is all you really, really need to do. So in lesson three, here's what we're gonna go over crazy. I know it sounds crazy. Stop that self-doubt right now. I'm telling you, you can. I'm your cheerleader on this. You can do it 30 seconds. It's not long at all. The thing is it works. There's tons of science to show about how you can accomplish these amazing things with just simply doing 30 seconds of a cold shower. The Iceman is somebody who I'll talk about who has a very uh, distinct method you can follow if you decide that you want to try to pursue this. And then I'm going to go into a little bit about the um, Ayurveda and, and a specific yoga go into this. Uh, it's kind of an ancient healing technology or tradition where they incorporate cold showers as part of a health system. Do what your body is capable of doing. Wim Hof. He is the founder of the Wim Hof method where you do progressive cold showers that goes into ice water baths and hiking up mountains in Poland in nothing but shorts. So here's the thing, you think you can't, you can, you absolutely can. And again, the first time I took a shower in a waterfall, I was in, it was absolutely shocking. I stepped in thinking, oh, this will be warm, right? And it was, whoa, not warm at all, but I needed a shower, I'd been hiking. So um, in nature, the thing is, almost all water is colder than what we're used to with our modern plumbing. So the point is here that with our modern plumbing, we're not used to this, but in nature, we used to be. We are built to withstand these elements, even though we don't always remember that in our modern houses. Millennia of living in the environments made us ready for this. So again, you can do this. You are built for this. You can do it. You just have to change your mindset and stop that self-limiting belief. Okay, so how do you do this? It's really easy. Just every day when you take your shower, just pop on at the very end of it, 30 seconds of a cold shower, as cold as you can stand it. That's it. And you can start with 30 seconds and then build from there. And if you can increase the time, just do it gradually over a week or so. Just give yourself like a week or so of 30 seconds and then build. And make it as cold as you can tolerate, not so that you're freezing, jumping, hyperventilating, but you can keep calm, easy breaths. And what you'll notice over the course of maybe your first week is that it gets easier every day with practice. In the emergency room, how do we do this as a calming technique? So this is how I, I have actually used this, not just as myself on using cold showers, but helping other people. The thing is, you know, the minute you get a sprained ankle, what's the first thing you ask for? Ice. It works fantastic for reducing swelling and inflammation in any joints. Another thing that we use it for in the emergency room is when people come in with a very specific heart rate called supraventricular tachycardia or SVT. There's different ways to stop this, but what we often can start with trying is what we call vagal maneuvers. And one of them is to put uh, cold ice on the face and that will actually slow down your heart. And what this is called is um, uh, the diver reflex, which I saw actually in when I, I had a patient who had a cut on his eyebrow here. And um, what we did was we put the ice on there just to make it soothing so that when I injected the lidocaine, it doesn't hurt so much. But the diver reflex, what it does is you apply cold ice to the face, ideally the whole face, but mainly like the center of the face. 
The diver reflex is a physiologic re reflex and it is more pronounced in babies and children and we grow out of it as we age. So it's not as easy to elicit. But in this patient, what happened was we put the ice on his face. He was on the monitor as well, the cardiac monitor and the nurse yelled, Dr. Katie, come in the room, blah, blah, blah. So I run in and I see ice on his face, heart rate dropping. And I'm like, get the ice off his face. And she's like, oh, what? And then I got a chance to educate her on the diver reflex, just like I'm about to tell you. So what happens typically, and a way to elicit this even more in adults, is when you hold your breath uh, as much as you can while you do this, because that stimulates the vagus nerves even more, is that breath holding kind of bearing down. Why we believe this happened through our evolution is that when that cold water is applied to the face, it preserves oxygen to the rest of the body by lowering that heart rate in terms of any possible drowning. And it's a complex process. And when the brain does get all the inputs, it sends it all via the vagus nerve to stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest calming portion of our autonomic nervous system. And the thing is through history, people know that it works. In the Roman frigidariums or in the Roman baths, they had hot, hot baths and, and cold baths, and they used both of them. And the Greek father of medicine, Hippocrates, is known to have prescribed cold baths and cold showers for his patients. The other thing is that there are these reported benefits through different areas of research. So it is reported to improve circulation, improve the immune system, willpower, improve your skin and hair, improve your alertness. I mean, come on, a cold shower will make you wake up pretty quick, right? And improve your metabolism. So how does it do this? So it improves the circulation by constricting those blood vessels in the skin and then sending warm blood to that area after the fact. And then it improves the immune system. There's some evidence indicating that certain immune cells are more activated by these signaling mechanisms and natural killer cells is one of those that was implicated. One study in 1994 done by the Thrombosis Research Institute found that people who took a daily cold shower had significantly more white blood cells, and those are the blood cells that fight the disease and are part, a big part of the immune system. And then in terms of how does it increase the metabolism, the idea is that it, it uh, over time, it increases brown fat, which is something present in babies, but we lose it as we age. And cold exposure increases the amount of brown fat that you have. So with doing that, you could actually increase your metabolism, which Wim Hof has actually shown in his scientific research, which I'll get into. And then you've probably seen it in as, you know, here is a Redskins football player doing it after a game in terms of cryotherapy. And as an ear doctor, like I said, we do this all the time when you have sprained ankles or rice therapy, which is rest, ice, compression, elevation, whenever you have any injury causing inflammation like a sprained ankle, or even after a very, very intense workout like NFL players do. The idea also with this is that it activates the sympathetic nervous system in a theorized healthy way. The concept with a cold shower is that you enhance resilience and explore the mind, your ability even to do it, the willpower there, even more while pushing the limits of your body. Here's a study that showed that, that was called the effect of cold showering on health and work, a randomized control trial, which randomized control trials are, are one of the best designs. And what it found was that when people took cold showers at the end of it, they had a reduction in self-reported sick days. So the reduction in sick days was the same across whether you did 30 second cold showers, 60 seconds, or even 90 second shower uh, group. So they had people who did different lengths of time of that cold shower. It was the same 30 seconds to 90 seconds. It was the same as self-reported sick days. The idea with this is that with less sick days taken, your productivity at work would probably increase. You'd have more days for vacation. And not only that, but they also theorized that they maybe were as sick, but maybe they just didn't feel so bad that they couldn't come in. So you actually feel better even when you are sick, which would go back to that increased immune system concept. And then here we get to Wim Hof, or the Iceman as he's known. And he was a guinea pig for a study called the Voluntary Activation of the Sympathetic Nervous System and Attenuation of the Innate Immune Response in Humans. So Wim Hof, he is known as the Iceman, and he's broken a number of world records related to cold exposure, including climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in shorts, uh, running a half marathon above the Arctic Circle barefoot, swimming underneath the ice for 72 yards, and also standing in a container while covered in ice cubes up to his shoulders, I believe, for more than 112 minutes. So he has this method, as I mentioned, he had some of his students do the method. So they injected people who had done this exposure therapy 
uh, with an E. coli bacteria endotoxin, which the endotoxin itself would stimulate flu-like symptoms and flu-like reactions. So fever, shivering, headaches, body aches, that kind of thing. But results show that not that, that the people who had done his method, they were able to control their sympathetic nervous system and immune response in terms that their anti-inflammatory mediators when they took their blood samples were over 200% higher while their pro-inflammatory mediators in their blood were 50% lower. So this has potentially important implications for conditions associated with excessive or persistent inflammation, especially autoimmune diseases, because it has that effect on the inflammatory mediators and the uh, blood cells. Okay, Ayurveda is an ancient holistic healing system from India that I only heard of in the past couple of years as uh, integrative medicine has become uh, more, more popular. And then I also heard of something in Kundalini yoga, which is a specific type of yoga and in that form of yoga, I guess there's tons of different kinds of yoga and Kundalini is one that stimulates uh, energy from the base of the spine and the movements or poses are designed to do that. But both of them, what they have in common is that the idea of a uh, cold shower is a detoxifying process. And I believe in Ayurveda and in both Kundalini yoga, they recommend doing them in the morning. They, uh, in these traditions, they recommend doing an oil massage before getting into the shower. And then when, in terms of this practice, when you get into the cold shower, you don't really jump in. Um, you take it slow. Then you do your arms and legs first, avoiding the thighs and the reproductive area, and then move the cold water stream up. But then and if you want the waking effect, you actually avoid the forehead. And in these systems, they think that if you do the forehead, it's more makes you more drowsy. So they also recommend doing this for between 30 seconds to 10 minutes every morning. And th that's kind of my practice. For me, what I do is I will try to do it every day. I typically do it when I wake up in the morning. And if I don't, even if I don't plan on showering, I'll at least, as I'm taking off my pajamas, I'll hop in the shower quick for 30 seconds, dry off and then put on my clothes. And that is a great way to start your day. And as I mentioned in one of the other modules, the 54321, I don't always want to do this. It's not always easy to gather up that willpower to turn it to cold. So that's where I do the five, four, three, two, one, turn it to cold, and then count to 30 seconds. So you kind of can do this before your willpower, your brain just kind of dissipates and you can jump right into it. And I can, let me tell you, I put it into this teaching because I believe in it so much. It really has huge effects. You don't need any skill to do this. You can just jump right in and do it and you feel like that sense of accomplishment the minute that you do it. So I would try it at least three times. Just give yourself three times to set that goal and go for it. Definitely let me know what you think. So to review, cold shower, I know it sounds crazy, but yes, you can do it. It works. There's athletes and scientists everywhere. There's all kinds of research indicating that it, it does work. Uh, if you want to get into more of this and uh, understand it from a different scientific perspective through the Wim Hof method, you can do that. And then if you are more into the holistic um, Ayurveda, ancient Indian traditions with Kundalini Yoga, um, you can follow their traditions and their recommendations. Happiness bonus for this lesson is the idea that anticipating something happy actually makes you happy as well. So to practice this, Think of even something as simple as watching your favorite movie can elicit feelings of happiness or just the idea of watching it is fun. You can also list out your top 10 dream vacations. I know right now a lot of people are, you know, the economic downturn, the pandemic, a lot of people are stuck at home. Even in cases where maybe it's just money's tight, you may want to just at least dream. And it's okay to dream because you can have that anticipation and that will bring you happiness. You can also schedule a night out with your friends. Um, you can schedule a phone call. I've, I've sometimes had to do that with my friends, you know, especially ones that live far away, but I miss them. And so I'll be like, Hey, let's, what are you doing? You know, Friday at this time and we'll schedule a phone call. And it's really fun because then you can anticipate chatting with your friend and having a good time. Another one is to think of your favorite meal and plan it out. Uh, just sometime in the next month, we're going to have, you know, steak and Brussels sprouts the way that I like them. It doesn't have to be a restaurant. It can just be your favorite one at home. that maybe takes a little extra effort. So you don't always treat yourself that way. Uh, but just even the planning it out and anticipating it will bring you happiness. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much. And definitely try that cold shower. Thanks. Download the course materials at stressrelieffurvivalguide.com.